I mean, right off the bat, they were like, it's Godzilla. And I was like, I'm in, but like, mm -hmm. what about it? And then they were like, you know, it's, it's 10 episodes. It's more of a human story. Uh, there's a mystery element to it. You're gonna play young John Goodman. And I was like, shut up, I'm doing it. Let's make it. And uh, it was an amazing experience. Yeah, I think um, for me, getting to play something so epic in scale, I don't think you get to do that very often as an actor in this world that like monsters exist. And also to be able to play a period piece in Hollywood as an Asian person was also really exciting. I don't think we've seen a lot of like, um, you know, Japanese American stories um, sometimes, but even then I think it's quite rare. So to have this trailblazing woman, you know, a Japanese woman from Japan kind of navigate a man's world in the 1950s, like the military and all these things whilst hunting monsters and, you know, selling a fantasy was just a dream come true, truly. I don't think we ever sat down and had a conversation about it. I think we just, Anders is just so present as a person and, you know, in the scenes too. So it's just so easy to be in it together and just react off of each other, I think. And we both bring sort of um, different things. Like you were saying, you bring levity. And I think I bring a lot of like intense intensity so these sort of opposing forces kind of worked in our favor i feel and it was on the page you know the characters are so well written and so nuanced you know those guys really know what they're doing there's i mean like to be honest there is like one mannerism but i'm not gonna say it because i don't if i if i tell you you're gonna steal my job Okay, but thankfully they told me I didn't have to like embody John Goodman and I was like, great, because I can't deliver that. He's got the classic John Goodman energy that we've loved for years, whether it's like Roseanne, Big Lebowski, like all these unbelievably classic roles um, that could be played by no one else, you know? So I wasn't gonna even try and step in those shoes, but uh, I brought my energy and, you know, I just did what I could do. I was ecstatic through the whole thing, I would say. But in terms of um, difficulty, the last scene of the first episode when Keiko falls to her death, that was me actually just falling on the wire over and over. So it was definitely, you know, extreme exposure therapy to my fear of height and speed. And um, I think I can say I kind of conquered it. So it didn't end well for me, but you know, yeah, in theory I've conquered it, so. I'm Japanese, I'm, I'm born and raised in Japan. So, and I've lived here for a long time. So I do think I have an understanding of the American perspective, but I do think it's different for Japanese people. It began as, a way to, I think it's just so fascinating how Japanese people process the war or in a way they didn't process the war. And when Godzilla came out in 1954, I think it hit really hard at something that they hadn't really addressed inside themselves, that they carried all of this fear and trauma and terror of something that terrible that had happened to them collectively. And then seeing a figure that in a way represented that must have been so cathartic in a way and also it's probably shifted the zeitgeist in a way i i imagine and um so that legacy continues and will always be part of how we view godzilla and in a way i feel like the american perspective is i think people relate to the monster perhaps more there's some, I, I, I can see how it's just in a different way cathartic to see something so colossal, not giving any, you know, thought to the wreckage it leaves in its wake. You know, it, it's sort of satisfying to just see something destroy everything in its wake. So I can understand that part of it as well. That's kind of my thought on it, yeah.